Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to probably the penultimate study with me video. This video takes place the day before our final exams start. So I woke up around 9 a.m., struggled to get out of bed for a while, went upstairs, made my usual breakfast of three Weetabixes, uh, and I was sad because there was no more squeezy honey left in the house, which means I had to have the Weetabixes with just milk, and that's not very nice. Then my friend Callum woke up. We're gonna make some coffee, and we're using this thing. I don't actually know what you call these things, but you know, you just screw them together and stick it on there, and it makes better coffee, so come enjoy. After breakfast, I spent a bit of time replying to your guys' emails. Uh, quick plug, I have a weekly email newsletter. You can always kind of reply to it to talk to me if you like. And then I thought I should probably start some work. Uh, but before doing so, I had to clean my room, obviously. So I spent the first half of the morning looking over history taking and systems review. So what that means is that when you're talking to a patient and you know taking the history trying to work out what's going on, there comes a point where they're not gonna say anything more because they've said what they wanna say. And you have to ask them a series of quite closed questions like, you know, do you have any chest pain? Have you experienced any shortness of breath? Have you been having any nausea, vomiting? All of that kind of stuff that just screams for any other problems that might be going on. And there's a point I wanna make here about categorization. Now, categorization is a very magical technique. In fact, after spaced repetition and active recall is probably the third most important exam technique, and that is categorizing anything you can, whenever you can. So for instance, for my neurological systems review, there are about eight or nine different questions I needed to ask, but I managed to categorize those into like four different things and kind of lump a few things together so that I only had to learn four things rather than nine. Anyway, after doing some categorization to make sure I remembered these systems review questions, I asked myself, what if it came up tomorrow in the exam would I be least happy about? This is like a thing that I constantly ask myself and ask myself more and more often as we approach the exam. I thought that there was a slight possibility that a sexual health case might come up and there are a series of questions that we need to ask the patient in that. Uh, now this is a numbered list rather than bullet points uh, and in my head I'm constantly making links up between the various points so I can better remember them. If we start by asking them if they have any vaginal discharge then the discharge cues us to ask about itchiness and that cues us to ask about pain. If there's itchiness then that cues us to ask us about skin changes around the vagina and if there's skin changes around the vagina that cues to ask oh, are there any skin changes around the rest of the body? Do they have any systemic rashes? So you can see how a list of seven becomes kind of connected together so that you don't need to memorize a list of seven. Instead, you weave things together in a connected way. And while going through this topic, I'm actively thinking about how I might remember it because I don't trust my memory to just be able to remember something that I wrote down. And I think this is another mistake that people sometimes make and that I certainly used to make, is that I'd be making notes and I'd be thinking that the, the act of making notes is making stuff go into my brain. But that's just like never ends up happening. But if while making notes, you can kind of make a few mnemonics, you can like make these active links between the different topics. That just increases the number of cues available for recall, which increases the kind of encoding of the memory, which makes the memory stronger, which means you're more likely to remember it in an exam or whenever you're asked about it. So after spending 30 minutes reading about sexually transmitted infections and looking at pictures of vaginal and penile rashes, uh, we decided to have lunch and I'll see you after the break. So I After lunch, I spend some time going through various role plays in an OSCE preparation book. I read through the patient history and then do my best to come up with the possible diagnoses that the patient could have. And then I write these down on my iPad in a very rough, untidy way. Because the objective is not to make notes here, it's to active recall and to remember stuff. And when I write stuff down, I can like categorize things, which is a lot easier to do on paper or an iPad than it is to do in, in, in one's head or reading out loud. So that's why I like writing stuff down while I'm actively recalling. And again, this touches back onto the point about categorization. And the more we categorize things, the more likely we are to remember them. In fact, like when I was on my on my first surgical rotation as, as a clinical medical student, I remember one of the surgeons asking, what are the causes of small bowel obstruction? And in my head, I just, I just started kind of listing listing off the causes of small bowel obstruction. But then like one of the one of the registrars said that that in, in surgery and in, in medicine broadly, there is a phrase categorize or die. This is a clearly a bit more melodramatic than it needs to be. But the point they're making is that no one wants to hear you read off a list of things. They want to hear you categorize them. So now if I were asked about the causes of small bowel obstruction, I would say that the common causes are adhesions and hernias, but uh, other causes can be categorized based on the fact that the bowel is uh, a hollow tube and if it's a hollow tube it can be blocked from the outside it can be blocked due to a problem in the wall or it can be blocked from something in the lumen um, and then I could list off all the various things within those categories that cause small bowel obstruction. So yeah, just a minor digression that goes kind of goes with the point that categorization is really, really, really useful and you should be categorizing absolutely everything you can uh, if you wanna kind of increase your retention of, of, of the subjects. There's another point here that might be helpful and, and, and something that I often tell myself while revising is that I should not trust my memory. And like going back to the point I made earlier about how writing notes down just, I, I'm 
I'm just not going to trust my memory to remember the stuff I've written down. So as I'm writing stuff down, I'm making mnemonics. And while I was going through the stuff in this OSCE preparation book, one of the questions that came up was, what are the components of a confusion screen? I.e., if a patient is confused and we don't know why they're confused, what are the various different tests that we run to try and work out why they're confused? Now, a confusion screen is a really important thing to know, and I thought it was quite a reasonable exam question that might have come up. So I decided to, you know, I, I thought to myself, how am I going to learn the confusion screen? So what I did was that I wrote down the various components of the confusion screen and then like rejiggled them around so they made a reasonable mnemonic. Uh, so the mnemonic I came up with is CBT MSG. And I quite like these sort of three letter acronyms of things that we already know what they are. So CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy, MSG, monosodium glutamate, obviously. The point is that I, I, I have the letters CBT and MSG together in my head. So it's a lot easier to remember CBT, MSG than it is to remember like CMSBTG or, or something like that. And I'm not saying that you should be overly reliant on mnemonics and you should be trying to make mnemonics for absolutely everything. But what I'm saying is that, yeah, if you're asked about the confusion screen or anything else, you could probably work out a lot of them from first principles because they are sort of common sense and you kind of come across them a bit. But if you want to be slick and you want to increase the amount of cues you have available for recall, it's just nice having a mnemonic as an option. Anyway, for the next couple of hours, Seb comes over and wants to practice some history taking. So we bash through the cases in this book. We read out what the patient presents with and then we have a moment of silence while everyone in the room thinks or writes down what the possible diagnoses could be. And then we discuss the case and kind of work out what the answers are. This way, we all get practice and no one is spoon feeding anyone else. So we can all work through a large number of cases in a small amount of time. And we can all be practicing active recall by ourselves because ultimately we are going to be taking this exam by ourselves. So now it's 5 p.m. and at this point we've been through all the history cases in the OSCE preparation book. Uh, the exam is the following morning and I don't think there are any more holes that I need to plug at this point. Obviously I don't know everything but I'm pretty confident that I know enough to comfortably pass the exam so I spend the next few hours doing some editing. Around 7 p.m. we order some sushi for dinner as a pre-exam treat and you know while we're eating it we chat over some more scenarios, talk about what might come up in the exam tomorrow. Jake comes in at some point and we run a quick role play then Catherine comes in and we run another role play. So overall you know after 5 p.m. it's pretty chill but we're still doing a bit of group work. It's still quite fun because we're all working together but we're still kind of being productive. So now we're going to go to me from the past uh, who coincidentally was wearing exactly the same outfit and I'm going to share my thoughts the night before the exam. All right guys, so that brings us to the end of another study with me video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, our first exam is tomorrow. Uh, this is the first in our crop of OSCEs. So we've got five stations tomorrow, four history taking stations, and then one challenging station, which is gonna be a mystery. Um, feeling quite relaxed about it. Just done my pre-exam shave. So I look slightly slightly more clean shaven than usual. Um, but yeah, I th I'm, I'm sure tomorrow I'll be going to the toilet many, many times before the exam. Um, but what I like to try and do is kind of tell myself that that feeling in my tummy is excitement rather than fear or stress. Uh, and there's, there's this thing I read on the internet that said that that's like a legit way to kind of hack your brain into thinking that you're having fun rather than absolutely terrified. So hopefully it'll be, it'll go all right. Um, yeah, you're probably gonna be seeing this miles after my exams are done. And if you're watching this, then you probably have exams of your own. So uh, I'll be smiling gleefully uh, on, on Instagram stories because I'll be finished. But if you're watching this and you, and you still have exams, then all the very best of luck with them. I really hope you smash them. Uh, thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Uh, have a lovely evening and I'll maybe see you in the next video. Good luck with your revision. Good luck with your exams. Good night.